This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. Now, what does that mean? That means that the coffee is not roasted until after you order. It's not sitting on a shelf somewhere in a warehouse. It's roasted after you order. So you get that fresh coffee delivered to you as quickly as possible. Um, Coffees come in K-Cup. Gift cards are available over at ironbeancoffee.com. You can check out all the other great, great coffee that they have over there. They use high-quality coffee beans from Colombia, Brazil, Honduras, and many, many other places across the globe. Uh, again, find out this and much, much more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Oh, we got some recruiting updates for today. We're getting closer to spring, Jared. We are getting closer. I, I went to actually, I, I went to Lowe's today and then just like walked around the garden center and just being like, soon, soon, soon. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you do right. when you get old. You go to Lowe's just to be like, soon there'll be plants here. Soon they'll be buying mulch. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and kick us off here, Jared. So, Austin, I literally uh, just did all of the, all the work. I'm seed starting this year. So I literally just like planted thousands of seeds today in my basement. Now I'm ready. Oh, no gangland. Gr girl lights aren't just for that. Okay. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the sleep cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? You're doing right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, we're talking some recruiting today. We haven't done a building blocks episode in a while. Uh, we've had a couple recruiting updates. So, hey, let's uh, let's do let's do a recruiting show. Now, there aren't a huge number of recruiting updates to this point, um, but the one like solid piece. The one like, ah, uh, yeah, I can do that, Florida Buck. Um, the one solid, absolute piece of news here uh, is the commitment of Luke Montgomery. Um, I in our in our um, mock preview, our our mock prediction for this class, um, we basically labeled Luke Montgomery as like the one person who Ohio state 100% couldn't miss on. Like it was just not acceptable. It would just the biggest of failures. If they couldn't get Luke Montgomery to commit to Ohio state, mm -hmm. they've lost out in recent years, uh, starting with, but not exclusively Jackson Carmen going to Clemson. Ohio State has missed out uh, on guys in the area and like also like guys in Indiana who they used to get on the offensive line. Guys in Kentucky who they used to get along the offensive line. Like, oh, don't worry, Austin. Did you see the Bengals offensive line? Jackson Carmen wasn't good enough to start on that <laughs> or play. Uh, um, so don't worry about that. Uh, so the, uh, point here is that Ohio state needs to fix their offensive line. Uh, they have been taking too many project players as of late. Uh, they've not been getting the same level of recruiting success out of their offensive line that they've been quite frankly, mm -hmm. getting on the rest of the team. It's, yep, and then, it's a and sore then thumb. Yeah, and then with Luke uh, Luke joining or committing, 
Uh, he's he's the fourth best tackle in the country. Then you add that with uh, Joshua uh, Adela, who's the sixth best interior or center, I guess, interior lineman, the sixth best in the country. Center too. guard, guard center. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's shown that Ohio State's really trying to get these players early, trying to trying to really build this um, offensive line group again. What are you saying, Austin? It's pronounced Padilla. Padilla. Then you said double L. Oh, I think, pr- I think the L is silent. The L's are silent. Is that what you're telling us? That's, that's how I take it. I have no idea if it's Spanish or not. I, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're moving on. <laughs> All right. I, 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 I listen, I, I, I don't know what his heritage is, but he looks like an Ohio farm boy. If you catch my drift, um, I, going with a Hispanic pronunciation would not be my first, <laughs> <laughs> would not be my first instinct looking at a picture of him, but you know, I could be absolutely be wrong. He might have Spanish heritage. I, I don't know. Yep. All right. All right. So we were talking about fixing this offensive line here. Uh, Jared put down a shit ton of names on our notes here. <laughs> where do you where do you want to start other than Luke Montgomery at the very top there? Yeah. What do we have next? So uh, also mentioned Joshua Padilla. <laughs> we don't know. This is the sloop cast. <laughs> We don't know how to pronounce names here. Yeah, I get I get that that's how you want me to pronounce it. I'm just not convinced that's how you pronounce it. Um, so I, I basically put together. <laughs> well, you're not. Paul Gerd. Um, so I'm putting together what I called like the first five, right? To me, I feel like this is the realistic goal. This is the, I I would call this like realistic, optimistic. Does that make sense? This is, I think about as good as, I feel like this, if if everything falls into place realistically, but also optimistically, I think these are the five people who make up this offensive line class for Ohio state. Yep. Does that make sense to everybody that I, I know I didn't pronounce it well, but did I at least get the point across? Um, So the one criticism I have of my five names is that I have four tackles. No, that's not true. Is that true? No, 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 no. Austin's Austin's also an interior guy. So no, I I do have two interior and three tackles. So no, I'm 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 good here. So. Offensive tackles. Luke Montgomery already on board. Uh, Next would be different Austin, Austin. Uh, Peyton Kirkland. Uh, Peyton Kirkland is a offensive tackle. Uh, He is from the Orlando, Florida area. Montgomery said he could bump inside too. I would be surprised. Um, 6'5", 270, but also was athletic, is also athletic enough to had been considering playing tight end in college. Um, to me, he's a big, I, I think he's a big dude. Uh, I, I feel like he's, I feel like he's prime left tackle material in my mind. He's that big and he's athletic. That's an, that's an outside player in my mind. All right, so another tackle would be Peyton Kirkland uh, from Orlando, Florida. Uh, he's just outside the top 200 overall. Um, he's inside the top 20 offensive tackles. Um, I feel like Ohio State has a good relationship here. Uh, there's lots of, how do I want to say this? 
there's I just there's a good relationship here, right? I, I feel like this is a good opportunity for Ohio State. Um, I think that you know you I, I outside the top two hundred, just kind of in barely inside the the top twenty at his position. I know that those aren't numbers that make you go holy shit, but again, like the the we're very early in the recruiting cycle, and we don't have to take those numbers super seriously yet. Uh, he's yeah. interested in Ohio State. Ohio State's interested in him. If they can make this work, especially if they can make this work early, I think that that would be a huge pickup for Ohio State. Yeah. Now, for the think... sake of Peyton Kirkland, though, you I think you do want this to happen early. Yeah, you do. Yes. And speaking of um, speaking of hitting it really um, well here, another name on our on our list here. And if they get this player, it's a big, big win for Ohio State. And that's uh, Chase uh, Besantis uh, out of New Jersey here. Uh, fifth I'll best give you an tackle a in the on country. That uh, fifth, fifth best tackle in the country. 56th nationally here. Uh, Ohio State seems to do pretty well in the New Jersey area recruiting. New Jersey, Maryland area. Don, Don, Don Bosco Prep specifically is where he's from and where Ohio state has recruited well out of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if Ohio state can get him, that's, that's a big win. You, you, you talk about two offensive tackles currently in the top five. Yeah. That Ohio state would get. Yeah. Man, that's man, that, that, that's just, everything Ohio state fans have been wanting for quite a while now with all yeah. the miss with all the misses. Yeah, that would be huge for Ohio state. Unfortunately, it's probably coming a year late <laughs> um, as Ohio state's going to need to be replacing two offensive tackles. I, in all likelihood, uh, I think that's, I, I think that's a fair assumption to make that Paris Johnson and Dwan Jones will both be leaving after this season, um, I, I think that's, again, I think that's a given practically at this point. Um, there's a lot of concern, rightfully so, like who are going to be the tackles next year? Um, uh, yeah, well, uh, Austin says, won't both of them be out of eligibility or COVID shenanigans? Uh <laughs> are ref bots getting involved because the word COVID triggers him. Uh, thank you. Auto moderator. Um, <laughs> the yeah, <laughs> exactly. Austin. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I can't keep track of that shit anymore. I, I don't know. No, uh, no, I think they're both. Uh, I think they both have lots of eligibility left. Actually. Uh, they yeah. both got the COVID year added to their, Added to their, uh, added to their eligibility. I, I think they could both stick around. Um, hell, I think, I think Paris Johnson could stay another three years. If I'm, if I'm thinking correctly, I think he's only used one year, Austin. He's only used one year. No, he it, do, it doesn't matter if he redshirted or not. It was 2020. He's only yep. used one year of eligibility. I no, I'm right on this. I, I I had to say it out loud, but no, yeah, 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 yeah. That's COVID, baby. <laughs> yeah. So so the so the five guys so the five guys we have on here. So two of them two of them already committed. Luke Luke Montgomery and Joshua. Padilla, <laughs> that one's for you, Austin. Um, and then the other three that we we have on our list here is uh, <laughs> is Austin. Um, not going to try to pronounce that one because the other Austin in our chat will go after me. Uh, <laughs> kid out of Lakota East, and as well as the two that we mentioned, uh, Chase Bisantis and Peyton Kirkland. Yeah, Kyle. Um, as much as I would love, and I mean love to make fun of you. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, 
I don't know either. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try, though, because, you know, oh, Austin, Austin's going to jump jump on this grenade for us. He says, Sierra E. Veld. Sierra Veld? Sierra E. Veld. Sierra Veld. I, I've never heard that last <laughs> name before in my life. I'm going to trust you, Austin. Sierra Veld. If it's wrong, blame Austin. Well, yeah, I did you, it you, first try you, because you gave it to me phonetically. Yeah. <laughs> you, know who, you, know, you know who you should trust, Jared? The Iron Bean Coffee Company. You blame should. Canada. <laughs> we ain't blaming Canada. Or maybe we should. Is that are you saying Sierra Veld is a Canadian name? Uh, yeah, so the Iron Bean Coffee Company, the Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class, hand-roasted, Scand I think Scandinavian and Canadian are the same thing, right? It's just like Canada is the Scandinavia of, Canada is the Scandinavia of North America. That was a lot of us. So Jared, I'm, I'm about, <laughs> really I'm, had to I'm, stop I'm, and I'm... think about it. Now, since we're talking about the Scandinavians, Kyle, I think it's very important to bring up, uh, our Nordic gods, our Nordic gods uh, in Loki, Odin, and Thor, all of them in the, uh, all of them available at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. You can get the Loki. <laughs> Thanks, Austin. I was proud of it, too. Uh, you can, oh, God, I'm breaking everything. You can get the, uh, see, I'm uh, sorry. I broke the frame. I broke it. I broke it. Everything's fine. Uh, you can get the Loki, which is a light roast coffee. It's the latest roast coffee you can get uh, at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, it's it's not super light. It's like a it's a, it's pretty dark by light standards. It's it's a it's a light medium roast. Um, this is uh, the, the type of coffee this is made out of is one of the most renowned coffees in the world. It's wet process blend that is higher in caffeine, but still low in acidity and rich tasting. It has uh, a, a rich fragrance uh, with uh, citrus and floral notes. And uh, let's we're doing three. So let's move on to the next one. So if you want something a little bit darker than that, however, you should probably check out the Thor. Uh the Thor is a USDA certified organic fair trade coffee, just like all of the other coffees at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, it has a smooth taste. It is never bitter, has subtle notes of thunderstorms and lightning. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm reading it off of the website. I don't know what thunderstorms and lightning taste like, but that I, I mean, I guess you have to drink the Thor to find out. See, now I have your curiosity peaked, right? Now I have your curiosity peaked. What do thunderstorms and rain taste like? Find out at ironbeancoffee.com. Lastly, you have the Odin uh, coffee like a Viking. Um, Iron, Beans Odin, Iron, Iron Beans Odin, dark roast coffee made with 100% Arabica beans, giving you the edge and confidence to slay your day. Um, tastes smooth, never bitter, with subtle notes of earth and chocolate. Earth and chocolate, uh, no additives, 100% natural. And all of these coffees are completely sugar free and calorie free. Uh, and like I said, fair trade certified and USDA organic. You can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. I want to say, Jared, once I'm done with my current one, I will be opening up uh, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. I'm looking forward to that one. You know, you really should have said that. Before the ad I read, was I was trying to, but you kept. Uh, that's fair. That's, you know, that's a fair <laughs> criticism. But in my defense, we went from talking about Scandinavian names right into talking about <laughs> Thor, Loki and Odin. And I couldn't pass up that transition. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. All right, Jared. All right, um, those are the first the... five. Those are the first five names. Uh, two yep. of them already on board. Add Kirkland. Uh, Basantis? Is that how you pronounce it, Kyle? I feel like you I'm nailed it. I'm going to say Basantis. Basantis. I feel like you nailed that one, so I'm going to go with that. Um, and then as I scroll up in the chat to find where Austin spelled this phonetically for me, uh, Sierra Veld, uh, Austin Sierra Veld, uh, he is from the 
Uh, he's from Lakota East is where he's from. So if I don't know if we actually said that he's an Ohio kid. This is this is a great way to fix your recruiting class, your offensive line recruiting classes. It is by like having great talent within your state borders. That's a huge advantage. Um, but it's it's a it's an advantage that that Ohio State has not absolutely taken advantage of in the past. So again, locking up Luke, Mon Luke Montgomery here is enormous. And by the way, his brother's a dang good quarterback. Already has an offer from Ohio State, if I'm not mistaken. So, yep. uh, but that's a couple years out. We won't go there yet. But it might not be the last Montgomery you see at Ohio State. All right. So some other names, though. Let's talk about some other names, some other potential names we could see uh, along the offensive line. Uh, I'm going to start with Caden Proctor. Caden Proctor is one of the best players, period. In this class, top five player, period. Best offensive tackle, period. Best player from the state of I that's that's understood, right? Do I have to say that? <laughs> um, if you're wondering, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's from Iowa. This could this could be huge, absolutely huge for for Iowa. If Iowa can keep another player in state like they did last year I I I I can't I can't really even put it into words honestly really can't even put it into words uh they they had an enormous win an absolutely enormous win last season um being able to keep Xavier and Wonkpa home um it's it's the type of thing that can cause the next thing to keep going, right? It's like, okay, mm -hmm. you keep home a top 50 safety. Now, the potential decision to for um for for Caden Proctor to now say, well, what if I stayed home? It makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot less crazy for Caden Proctor to be like, well, in Wonka stayed in Iowa. Maybe it's time to start a thing. And Iowa was real good last year. Maybe it's time to start a thing. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering, one, no, he's in no way related to Josh Proctor. There's no relation there. But the other thing you might be wondering Huh, another kid from Iowa. You suppose they know each other? Same high school. So yeah, I mean it's it's tough. Uh, this I've I don't know if I've ever felt this way, but like I feel like it's gonna be really hard to get this kid out of Iowa. I don't know if I've ever said that before. Ohio State's gonna go head to head with Iowa for a five star offensive tackle and lose. Mm -hmm. Is that how it actually turns out? I don't know. Is that my feeling at the moment? Yep, that sure is. Ohio State's going to lose a head-to-head -head recruiting battle with Iowa. <laughs> it doesn't happen too often. Happened last year. I think it's going to happen again this year. Mm -hmm. All right, some other names to know along the offensive line. Uh, Aiden Lee uh, is a, sort of a new offer for Ohio State. I don't know a ton about him yet, but like I said, he just got offered by Ohio State, so absolutely a name to keep an eye on, um, as well as uh, Trevor, I want to say it's Locke, uh, Trevor Locke, he is from Indiana, so we, regional kid. Um, right now, it's not, look, the, the recruiting numbers, rankings, whatever, aren't great, Um This is the type of kid who I, if I'm, I'm going to be super honest and be super honest with you guys. I think Trevor Locke is the kind of kid who I would have been keeping a closer eye on last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause this is the type of kid that Ohio state have, has been getting the past couple of years, but I think right now he's a plan B for Ohio state. 
there's, I believe he has, maybe he doesn't. No, he does not currently have an offer. I don't think he has an offer from Ohio State. Um, yes, he does have an offer from Ohio State. He does have an offer from Ohio State. Um, but absolutely, I think at this point, a plan B. Um, just going to throw a few more quick names out there. These have all been tackles, by the way. Um, not going to go into huge detail on the rest of these guys, uh, but Lucas Simmons, Luke Burgess, AJ Sally, Isaiah Robinson, um, Samson. Uh, I'm 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 going to try my best here, guys. Going to try my best. Akuna Nolo. Is that right? Probably not, but I'm trying my best. Um, ah, uh, 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 didn't hate it. Yeah, th thanks, Austin. Um, I know it's not right, but I also don't feel like I totally embarrassed myself. Akun, so I think... Akun Lolo? That's... I feel like if we took your pronunciation and my pronunciation and, like, what, what's the golf thing where you take everyone's best stroke? A scramble? Thank you, Austin. I feel like I need your... I feel like I need the way you ended the set, ended his name and the way I started the name. And then if we combine that, we might have been competent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, last offensive name would be uh, Zachariah Owens from Georgia. Uh, Zachariah Owens is a um, incredibly talented player. I just have a hard time seeing Ohio state getting him or anyone getting him to leave the South at this point. Um, all right, some interior, some interior offensive linemen, uh, Joshua Padilla or Padilla. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> already committed to Ohio State. Um, we've already talked about Austin. Um, so what if Ohio State wants a third interior guy? What if Austin doesn't work out? Um, a, a player to keep an eye on could be Clay Weldon. Uh, Clay Weldon uh, is out of the Tampa area. So absolutely a guy to keep an eye on there. Um, Alex Birchmeyer, uh, a kid out of Virginia, uh, I believe has a scholarship offer from Ohio State. Um, Amir Herring from the Michigan area. Um, again, I feel like the, the kid from Indiana who we were talking to or talking about before um, might have been a guy you kept a closer eye on in the past, but a mere herring like a small fish. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, it's spelled herring. If it's not herring, I think I, I think you can forgive me because it's literally spelled like that. Um, I like letter for letter. It's spelled herring. So, yeah. um, the another kid. but I think he's all I think I feel like that ship's probably sailed. I think he's probably on his way to Michigan already. Um, yeah. but if if Ohio State if the trade here, if the trade here is that Ohio State got Luke Montgomery and Michigan gets Amir Herring, that's a good trade. That that's mm -hmm. you will take that. Um, yeah. um couple of, couple of other names to keep an eye out for. Um Najaya Harris out of IMG Academy and uh DJ Shan Shanahan. Shanahan. Thank you. Sh I, I think that's <laughs> spelled. Yes, you're right. Um, kid out, kid out of. Um, I think that's spelled Austin, by the way the, the same Austin, way. Austin area as like the old Chiefs yeah, Shanahan. coach. Shanahan. Yeah, Shanahan. Yep, you're right. And of course now um, his kid son. Out, yep, kid out of Austin, Texas here too. So just some other names too. Um, oh, one last one. I missed this one to the next page here. Uh, um. Kelton, Kelton Smith out of uh, Columbus, Georgia area. Yeah. Uh, recent offer. I think it's recent. I just, I just said recent, um, <laughs> but I think he's a somewhat recent offer by Ohio state. Don't see him leaving the South at this point, but Ohio state offered him. So uh, he's, he's in the spreadsheet. What can I say? Mm -hmm. So Kyle, I think, I think that's it. I think we're good talking about the offensive linemen for this episode. I think those are most, if not all of Ohio state's targets. I gave you the five guys who I feel like Ohio state or want to end up with realistically. 
Um, but I do have one more. I have one more thing that uh, one more point I want to make recruiting wise. Anthony Brown. Now, Anthony Brown is not an offensive lineman. He is a wide receiver. He is from Springfield, Ohio. I included him. I bring him up for a very important reason. I included him in my mock class last month. By the way, I thought about doing another mock class for this episode, but I decided it was basically like going to be the same thing. I just, I hadn't really changed my mind on anyone yet. So I just, I thought it would, it wouldn't be, it would be mostly worthless because I just didn't feel like I was going to update it enough. So we're doing this instead. Um, Anthony Brown, I included him in my mock class from uh, during last month's Building Blocks episode. I told you that he was committed to Minnesota, but the, despite that, I still feel like he would end up at Ohio State. Guess what, Kyle? I, I say guess what, you know. You know what, Kyle? Just tell everyone. Don't guess. Just tell everyone. He, 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 de- he decommitted from Minnesota, opening up his opening up of where he wants to go to next. And obviously, obviously Ohio state's in that mix there here. Now, now you, you look, you look at the numbers here. Um, composite wise, doesn't seem like a player Ohio state should go after, but you gotta, you gotta it's keep fine. an eye. You gotta keep an eye on, it's on um, Anthony Brown though. It's he's a, he's a skill kid from Ohio who yep. hasn't had a chance to do his camps and shit yet. Cause Ohio has stupid practice rules. Yep. It's, it's fine. Ohio state's in the position where they could get like anyone they want at wide receiver. So if they said Anthony Brown is a kid that they want, then I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to go right ahead and, and trust that everyone ever there knows what they're doing. <laughs> Heartline can, just pencil him in. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I told, I felt confident that he was going to end up in Ohio state's class back when he was committed to Minnesota. Imagine how good I feel about it now. Yeah. That, I'm not predicting that it's going to happen anytime soon. Cause I don't know when he's going to do it. And I don't know anything, but I do know he's going to commit to Ohio state eventually, but I don't know anything. All right. Um, I, it's true. I know nothing. Yes. Like Jon Snow. Um, Kyle, is that it? Is that all we got for today? That is completely looked at the offensive line class. Gave you a quick update at wide receiver. Um, I told everyone that I still really like my mock from, from, from last month with the exception that, uh, Will Smith Jr. has joined the class. So, like, just make it a 26-person class and throw Will Smith Jr. on there, and it's the same class. You can – you can. Uh, Richard Young was included. A.J. Harris was included. You can go listen to that episode, Florida Buck. It's, it's, it's still up. I didn't take it down. <laughs> it's still up. Listen, I leave all the mocks up. Should I? I don't know. Do I? Yes. Uh, but yeah, the uh, you can go you can go listen to that episode and then just pretend like I also included Will Smith Jr. in that recruiting class in that mock, and then it's it's the same mock right now. It's I I've made no changes. I I like I I like Brandon Ennis more now than I did then, but I included him in that class. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, so yeah, it's. I, I, I still like Carnell Tate. I still like Brandon Ennis and I still like Anthony Brown. If we're just going to sort of round out the wide receiver talk on top of the, on top of the offensive line talk. So that that's it. That's that. That's the whole thing. You can, you go listen to that. If you want me to do a mock class right now, just go listen to that and pretend like I said, Will Smith jr. And it's the same mock class. Still, I've made no changes. All right, Kyle. Uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I think I think that's it because I think that's all um, we have for the actual show. Show. Yeah, there's a couple couple of things. I think the biggest thing was about the the playoff uh, and possibly expanding it and 
that's not looking like it's going to until their contract ends. I think it was 20 through 2025, I believe. Uh, so no chance of moving that to, to past four. And honestly, like the more you think about it, it's like, okay, it can be a good thing for Ohio State to keep it at four, but I, I, not enough time to really dis- discuss about that. But keeping it, keeping it four teams for the next three years right now, and there's been a lot of talk recently, Jared, about well, should Ohio State winterize their stadium to possibly host a uh, a playoff game here? And I just I just don't see it. There would be so I much work be, that would need to go into it. I would be curious what the dollar amount on that would be. Because the, yeah, the stadium's 100 years old, and it's not designed— to be played in played in in the winter. It's just not. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, like you, you can go look this up. It happened. Oh God, when did this happen? Maybe two thousand fourteen ish, um, when the Minnesota Vikings knocked down their dome, and then obviously then turned around and built a new dome. Um, they went and played in the Minnesota go for whatever bank stadium it is this year. Went and played in, in, in the, in the Minnesota's stadium. That stadium was like brand new at the time. It was, a, it was only a few years old in order to make that stadium NFL ready. And when I say NFL ready, I mean games after November. Games in December and January, they had to sink. I think it was like $6.6 million into a brand new stadium in order to have it ready to be played in the winter. Pipes freeze and burst. If you want to know if Ohio State is actually interested in winterizing the shoe, look no further than what they do this spring. Because the first step in winterizing the shoe would be to heat the field. They're already ripping the field up. If they're going to do it, now would be the time to do it. Well, no, Austin, you have all the... Uh, why heat the field, Austin asks. No, no, no. You, you have to heat the field as like a safety precaution because of concussions. Oh, okay. You're just being a smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> essentially but I'll, I'll in case anyone else is at, is wondering i'll go ahead and explain it anyway like the field essentially gets wet then it freezes and then it becomes hard as a rock which increases risk for player injury uh including but not limited to concussions um literally all of the nfl stadiums well, all, all of the cold weather NFL stadiums have heated fields, all of them, even, even Pittsburgh does. And their field, by the time you get to like December, their field basically looks like a mud pit because they refuse to put in, they refuse to put in uh, artificial turf in Pittsburgh. So it, it just looks like a mud wrestling, a giant mud wrestling ring by the time you get to December. Uh, so yeah, heating the field, if they heat the field, you'll know those ser- they're serious about it. If they don't heat the field, you know they aren't. But I would be really curious what it would take. Because that's like that would be like step one. Step two are just the pipes. It's an open air stadium. A lot of the water pipes are in open air. A lot of them are embedded in a hundred year old concrete. How would you winterize those pipes so that they didn't freeze and burst? And I, I, these aren't answers I know. I, I would be curious to know what the price tag of such an operation like that would be. Yeah. Heating the field, we could look Very that costly. up. NFL stadiums do it all the time. Very costly. How would you winterize? I, and I'm just saying, like, I know the pipes would be an issue. I'm an idiot. I don't know anything like what else would need to be winterized. I have no clue. 
Yeah. But I know the pipes would be an enormous challenge and an enormous need. Mm-hmm. And I know that right. would be a giant pain in the ass and a, an mm-hmm. expensive pain in the ass. Yeah. All right, Jared, that's all we got for today. That's all the time we have. Let's go ahead and end today's episode. Sure. Um, tonight's ending episode or tonight's ending music rather uh, will be brought to you by a, Oh, wait a minute. Austin, Austin had a request. I almost forgot. Austin. I, I was about to say, I almost forgot, but the reality is, is that I did forget. It was 40 minutes ago and I have ADHD. That could have been three years ago. I don't know. Austin has a request. What you got, Austin? It was 40 minutes ago, though, and I have ADHD like that. That that was forever ago. I've thought about a thousand things since then. Oh, he hold on. He he wrote out the whole thing for me. <clears throat> Today's ending music will be played by Playing to Vapors, and it will be off of their Glitch in the Void album with the song being Giant Conspiracy. So once again, thanks for listening. And this is a reminder to listen to local music, drink local beer, and support your local podcasters. This is Giant Conspiracy by Playing to Vapors.